Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. Yesterday was a very long day. 16 hours of working on one document. What document was done, honey? It was this notice of change in terms of agreement for child support. Okay, I got I still got to edit this. This is a long, no it ain't long. This is uh, about 10 pages long. There are two of them here that I got to combine the two. So uh, it's too many words for the system to combine. So I got to combine it, okay? System of the down. All right, so I'm going to be down like Brandy said. I want to be down. All right, this video is to show you guys this. Those of you who had our alleged judicial criminal conduct complaint, please understand I forgot the password. <laughs> I, I locked it What a password. I password protected the document and I forgot the stupid password. Well, guess what? It is no longer locked. You can amend it, you can edit it, you can do all of that junk that you want. It is not locked, so you can go to the channel and pull it up. Do what you wanna do, okay? Yay, yay, yay. Okay, as uh, my boy Keith Sweat would say, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, like we said before, right now the way it is set up, you can only click one box at a time, so you're going to have to do this by hand. You can do it differently. What do you mean? Well, you can do this. Watch this. You can edit it. Oh, no, we can't do it that way. We got to do it this one. This is the one. You can edit it and get rid of all these boxes so that you can do one at a time. So you keep the first box, ta-da, and then you can add other boxes. But for right now, see how I did that? that? That ain't what I was trying to do. Let's get rid of that. I have to select all of the boxes. So what I do is with this one, now this is just an, this is a sample. I'm going to get rid of those. Cut. Again, the document is editable. And because it's editable, now we need to explain to you guys how to handle this so that you understand. The way that criminal complaints work, and it is the way that they work, the way that criminal complaints work, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Judges are not immune. Okay, now we said right here, Positive Law Title 18 of the U.S. Code, supported by Evidence Section 241, 242, 245, 247. We didn't say that this was the law. We said the Positive Law Title 18. You must bring a criminal complaint against a judge. Go back, look at the Fifth Amendment. It requires an indictment or information. This is your information complaint. You want to make sure you understand this is an affidavit. That's why you're going to need a notary. You're going to send this to the attorney general for your state, and you're going to send it to the attorney general of the United States. I want you to understand, you must bring forth criminal charges against a judge. That hasn't changed. Why? Because they only sit while they're in good behavior. Once they have a criminal complaint filed against them and the attorney general doesn't do a proper investigation, that doesn't eradicate your complaint. Your complaint is an affidavit. Affidavits must be rebutted. They cannot rebut your affidavit if it's based on facts, if it's based on truth. That's why we don't make any conclusions of law. We make allegations. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch this guy. I am aware. Oh, Lord, I'm so much aware of things. Even right here, I am not aware of all your rules. Okay? Uh, if the, the fact the defendant may wait to challenge jurisdiction until after the trial begins. In such a case, the court must decide whether the state's evidence of jurisdiction is sufficient to reach the jury, and if so, must submit the issue to the jury. You see that right there? We included all of that for y'all. We don't come to conclusions because when you're dealing with these idiots, they hate for you to reach a conclusion, even though you are required to know the law the same as they're required to know the law. So, of course, you should be coming to conclusions. Remember, these are updated cases in here. 
that we did an extensive search, not with ChatGPT. Nope, didn't use ChatGPT to do this. Did not use this. this is 11 pages long, ladies and gentlemen. Go over it. Check every box that's appropriate that applies. Follow it with the Attorney General's office. Okay? Now, there might be some misspelled word. Don't worry about it because it has that cohesion clause in it which says everything is to be construed contextually. <laughs> the term misconduct and disability as used in this complaint process are defined as misconduct, uh, are defined by law. Misconduct is conduct prejudicial to the effect of an expeditious administration of the business of the court and upholding the sanctity and obligations of the Bill of Rights as ascribed by the oath of office for the appointed judicial official. This is not my quote, people. That's the court's quote. Okay? So, please understand, a lot of effort was taken to put this together. As you see, this is not simple. It's got links and everything. And it's got a fillable section for you to we'll go right here, fill it in. And it's in small enough font so that you can fill it in. Okay? We did that for y'all. Okay? For y'all. Didn't do that for us. And this section continues so you can have a lot of time. What do you believe the appropriate remedy is? Fly them, mother! Fly them! Just, just go ahead and just fry them. Put them right there in a the pan and add some oil and turn it all the way up. Fry them! Put handcuffs on them like they put handcuffs on me. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. You get to put in what you think the appropriate remedy is. Be reasonable. See, is please help us to understand more about your complaint by completing the explanation section. You may give details on a separate form or sheet if you choose. Please be as specific as possible in explaining who's, the what's, the when's, the where's, and the how's, and the why you believe the conduct is criminal, and what rights of yours as secured by the Bill of Rights were violated. You see how that? We even have instructional information here when you hover above it not this one this one don't need no instructions see watch this this one don't need no instructions because they're right here what do you believe are your secured rights the bill of rights do you believe that the bill of rights applies to you are you a citizen of one of the states of the united states you know i i should get rid of this because that shouldn't be there but i'm sorry but i can't because I didn't get rid of it, and I'm not going to upload this, so y'all just going to have to let the double question mark be there. Look, let me explain. I was just having a conversation with somebody about this this morning. Oh, by the way, in, in, it is necessary for me to say this right now. The young man who I told you was missing, I couldn't get in touch with him, that we usually talk at least three, four times a week. As a matter of fact, since Friday, we've talked at least eight times. Um... This young man is okay. They issued, and you all need to understand this as well, they issued a bench warrant against him, saying that he had failed to appear at a hearing. It turns out that not only did he not know that the hearing was because they didn't send notice of a hearing, but he showed up in court in December and in February of this year. And then again in February, the third time he showed up, notifying him that there was some bench warrant, they held him in jail for 30 days. Ladies and gentlemen, a bench warrant for failure to appear is cured when the defendant appears in court. So let me see. I don't think, I don't think, give me a second. Got to put y'all on pause. Sorry, didn't have to put y'all on pause. This right here is Moby Rise. This is our website on Moby Rise. See that right there? That's not our website on the internet. This is the back end of our website. We're using that Moby Rise program. Anyway, we're going to go to perplexity.com. And we're just going to put the statement in as opposed to going to casetext.com because casetext has reduced its time for a review of its site from 14 days to 7 days. So I don't have time to be doing it every 7 days. It ain't worth it. Wake up. A bench warrant for failing to appear is cured 
once the defendant appears in court? Question mark. Case text. Stop listening. Stop listening. He gets on my nerves sometimes. C I T E S. And so we put that in there. To cure a bench warrant for failing to appear varies by jurisdiction. However, in general, appearing in court in person or through an attorney can help clear the warrant. Example, in Idaho, a warrant for the arrest may be issued if the defendant fails to appear or pay a fine. In Nebraska, a warrant may be issued as soon as a day after the payment is due. We're not talking about payment due. We're talking about an individual, a bench warrant issued for failure to appear. Okay. A bench warrant issued by a judge when a defendant fails to appear in court, the warrant authorizes the law enforcement. The bench warrant can be cured or removed by appearing in court personally or through an attorney. It ain't can be cured. It is cured. Why? Because a bench warrant is nothing but contempt of court. You cure the contempt of court by showing up in court, letting them know whatever the issue was. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's what you need to know. You will apologize to the court for any misunderstanding. When you tell the court, I was not aware, did not know, and you're truthful, don't just make up some excuse. And you're truthful. Remember, when you appear in court, when you appear in court, you're submitting to the court's jurisdiction. When you appear in court, you're submitting to the court's jurisdiction. Now, look, it says, once the defendant appears in court, the judge will determine an appropriate penalty under the law. The judge does not get to determine what's appropriate. The law determines what's appropriate. A bench warrant can be cured or removed by appearing in court personally or through an attorney. Ta-da! There you go. That's everywhere in the United States. A bench warrant is only a contempt of court. So you simply apologize. And then they gave him a bail. Well, he had already, here's the point, he had already appeared in court twice since they issued the bench warrant, and the bench warrant was only issued because he gave the court a bill of exchange, a promissory note for the payment of the fines. You guys must be careful with that. You must know what you're doing. You need not argue with the court. We've given you, I have given you, Lord have mercy, I've given y'all tons of information regarding the fact that your promissory note, your bills of exchange are permitted under law because such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank and or of the court because the court is a clearinghouse facility and shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States for the same purposes of national bank notes. Hey, if you accept national bank notes, don't y'all accept national bank notes? National bank notes is legal tender in the United States, then you got to accept my promissory note. You got to accept my bill of exchange. You got to accept my banker's acceptance. You got to accept my trade acceptance. You got to accept my draft. Get up out my face. Get up out my face. Sorry, apologize for that. You know, he hasn't had any sleep and, you know, he's... He's really exhausted, but he's got to work on his document. So he wanted to take the time, because he's got less than a minute to give you guys this information, to let you know that when you guys are doing your complaints, when you are doing your criminal complaints against the judge, you bring the complaint first. You send it to both attorney generals. Remember, judges don't have to be bonded in that sense. When you send it to the attorney generals, you are also going to send the judge a copy. No matter if there's 15 judges, send all of them a copy. Let them know that so long as this remains unresolved and unrebutted, they are perceived apparently by law to be acting out of good behavior or not in good behavior. And as a result, the policies and procedures of the court require that they be suspended until the matter is resolved. 
You can explain that. It varies by jurisdiction, but I would definitely do research on that, people, and get y'all stuff in there. Got to go. Got three seconds. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go.